Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread, where we bring life's favorite ingredients together. Faith, family, friends, and most of all, food. And today we have a special guest with us, someone you may recognize if you're addicted to QVC like I am. He is the electronics expert, Michael Padula. He's gonna be on our show, and hopefully he likes my food so much that he'll sell my cookbook on his show. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and today we have with us a special guest, Michael Padula from QVC. He's the electronics expert, and he's going to uh, talk to us about his career. I am an on-air expert at QVC, which means that I am technically an electronics expert, which means that I represent different brands that come on QVC. I endorse and kind of talk about different electronic products, such as laptop computers, desktop computers, paper shredders. I am an actor and a voiceover artist and have done some hosting. I started about 20 years ago in college as a radio announcer and then moved into commercials. I uh, lived in Los Angeles for a while, was doing commercials, did some voiceovers, moved into on-air hosting, and then finally, within the last five years, have kind of gone towards on-camera acting a little bit more and have done some little appearances on a few uh, few network TV shows. Monsignor Jamie, I'm really excited because I heard that you are making uh, Varese Frittata today. And as a fellow CIA trained chef, as my dad, I'm looking super forward to your cooking. Not going to compare the two. I'm sure you're going to blow them out of the water. We won't tell him that, but looking very forward to uh, to trying the frittata today. Michael, welcome. Thank you so much. Good to Monsignor. see you again. Thank you so much. It's I'm been so a, glad to be here. a while, not it's, too long, it's but been it's been a, a while. Yeah, yeah. If, at familiar spot. I know. It's been, it's been too long. We'll You've been working that. on this show. You helped us put this together. I have. And now yeah. your, your career took off. Thank you, and thank everybody that I used to work with here on this show, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with where I am. Well, I'm happy for you. I know you Thank grew you. up in, in Staten Island. I was born on Staten Island, but but then moved to Louisiana and okay. grew up there. Oh, you yeah. grew up there. Correct. Okay, all right. So Italian New Yorker uh, with roots here, but then you know left and went to Louisiana and grew up a Southerner. So now tell me, how did you uh, get involved with QVC and uh, how did that all work out? So, you know, I've been in the entertainment world for, for quite a while now, a little over 20 years. I uh, started off as a radio job. When you started, five years old? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From your mouth to his ears. Uh, so in continuing on with, with some acting and some on-air hosting that I did, you know, somebody that I knew that was working in the casting for, for QVC said, you know, you should go out for this. And I went out for it and they ended up saying to me, you know, we'd really like for you to be uh, a guest host for us and to wow. and to share your knowledge of electronics and talk about different products that we have here at QVC. So it was kind of a kind of a little bit of luck and hopefully a little So you bit had of luck. a background in electronics before? Or I, uh... I had a hobby of electronics oh, okay. and just a background of, of some television and right, some right. on-air hosting and those kind of came together and and that's how I ended Now how up many with printers and uh, shredders <laughs> and computers do you sell in a day? Okay, so I know that the busiest day that I was on the air, I don't know how many units it was, but it was well into the seven figures of dollars. In one day. Correct. Oh one product God. in one day. You know, when you watch the show, you, you sit there, you know, I mean, you don't have that much time, but when you do watch it, I mean, you, you're tempted to buy these things. It's amazing. Well, you know, it's so easy and everything looks so great. And I have to say, a lot of things are good, but sometimes you get you know, a lot smaller than you see on TV. You know what? The, <laughs> 30 days to try it or send it back. That's I what know. we say on the but, air. But I, tell you, I bought a lot of things from there and I have to say, you know, it's so easy. You just click, click, click. You know, it's, it's no kind of a smart online. business model they know, do. But is. yeah, you know, and, and listen, we have a good time time bringing products to to viewers and to the family who, okay. who want to check things out and um, you know I don't get to work on every product but the ones that I do I, I I tend to only work with the products that I happen to really really like that's good so I mean if you like it it's so much easier to sell absolutely that's why you're gonna love my cookbook I, and you're gonna be able to sell heard about it we'll have to see <laughs> if we can get it on Q -Man. that would be good that would that would be fantastic we'll see about you know that. all the profits go to futures in education well, so hopefully even more the reason yeah so anyway tell me a little about your background you I understand that your father uh, was a chef at the culinary, you went to the culinary institute or he taught there? He attended the culinary institute. Right. Like myself. Like yeah. yourself, yeah. yes, that's a matter of fact. Um, graduated from there and uh, worked at a couple of spots in New York City and has continued to work as a chef to this day. Never taught there. He did teach back in Louisiana, as a matter of okay. fact. He taught culinary arts sure. at the local community college right. there, but he still works uh, as a chef to this day. Um, he's down south still, he's in Houston, Texas. 
Okay. Still, still cooking. He was at the Russian Tea Room. He I was. Heard, and That's correct. Where else? A few of the bigger ones that I remember from from being a kid were down south, and you wouldn't know those. Right, right, but right. Russian Tea Room is yeah, probably the biggest so one that, yeah. that he worked at. Oh, that's great. And yeah. did any of that uh, those skills? Uh, Listen, I mean, you I like to cook. I do. I actually. So you really live in do. Bay Ridge, right? I do. Now, I live in Bay Ridge. I was saying earlier today that the only way that I feel like I really know that I'm the father of a chef is I don't like to use measuring cups or measuring spoons when I'm cooking. Oh, I so just true. taste and try and use these and this and... That's one of the complaints that I get with this show. Is that right? Because I say a little of this and a little of that and you know, Craig, our executive director, he's always saying, you have to say how much you put in a teaspoon. People pull me up. You know, as a chef, we don't do that. Even, you know, even my grandmother used to do that. You know, my aunt and stuff, when they would cook a little of this, they, they would never give you a recipe. I'm telling you, it goes <laughs> against something I feel innately. And I think it's just the, the chef's blood that's in me, but I yeah. get it. Yeah, I get it completely. Uh, but you know, it is an art. And the more you do it, the more, the easier it is. So you really don't follow recipes. And what cooking is too, we have a tendency, the things we like, we put more of. Sure. Yeah, and you can do that. You can be creative with cooking. Sure. It's not, you know, baking is different. Baking, you have to, it's a science. Everything has to interact with one another. But as far as the food, you, you create it. And I tell you, if I don't like certain things, like I don't like olives. Okay. So I, I cook very few dishes with olives. Okay. And if it's in there, I just eliminate it. <laughs> as you should. As you should. So anyway, we're going to take a break yeah. and uh, we'll prepare a meal if you like it. I'm sorry. We'll take a break right now and uh, don't go away. We'll be back with Michael Padula from uh, QVC. Welcome back to Breaking Bread with Michael Padula from QVC. He's the electronics expert. And today I'm going to be preparing a barese frittata for him. And hopefully he enjoys it. <laughs> I have no doubts. I'm, I'm sold already. <laughs> All right. You don't look like you eat too much, though. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. But you're an the optical illusion. <laughs> okay, this frittata comes from the body region, which is in southern Italy on the Adriatic. And it's a very simple thing. And what makes it a little different is that instead of whipping up the eggs, we put them in a blender so they become very fluffy. So I'm just going to put, I took eight, eight eggs. I'm going to put this in the blender. All right. And then we're going to throw in eight tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, okay? Eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight tablespoons of breadcrumbs. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. See, I know how to count. Yeah. <laughs> A little salt. A little pepper. And a little hot pepper. Yeah, I love a little spice. Yeah. You come from Louisiana, right. right? Yeah. They're used to spice. So put this in here. Okay, I'm just gonna stir it up. Just for about 30 seconds or so. So get nice and aerated. Okay, now I have my saute pan in here. Put a little olive oil. Right. I also want to put a little cooking spray along the side. Okay. Just so it doesn't stick. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna throw in some peppers. Yep. Some onions. Okay. I like to use uh, red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers. It makes it nice and colorful. Sure. So I'm gonna put this on. Put this a little higher. Let that saute for a minute. And then I have here some Potatoes, I got okay. small new potatoes, okay. the mini potatoes. I have some red, yellow, purple potatoes. Throw some of those in. Okay. We're just gonna let this saute for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's a very easy dish. Yeah. I mean, frittatas you can make with anything. Sure. Leftovers, okay. meats, vegetables, chicken, fish, anything. You mix it all together, you throw some vegetables with it. You just throw in some eggs, and what makes this different, as I said, we're blending the eggs, so sure. it's gonna be really aerated and fluffy. Okay. And we're just gonna saute this a little bit after the sautés. I blanched the potatoes already because they're a little hot. Sure. So we cook them a little bit. All the other vegetables are fresh, or uncooked. Mm -hmm. I throw the uh, egg in, and then we're gonna put it in the oven for a few minutes. So well, that's sautéing. Tell yeah. me a little bit about yourself. I understand you do some mission work too. You've been to Puerto Rico. Yeah. You've been down south. You've been uh, yeah. I was, I was lucky enough to be able to come along with uh, with two mission trips that we did here locally. 
Uh, we went to uh, do some hurricane relief work after two hurricanes in both Puerto Rico and in Houston. Oh, right. There was a group of us that went down. Super rewarding experience. It was so touching to see how grateful the uh, the hurricane victims were to us volunteers who right. came down. What it, organization did you work with? It was through um, a, a Catholic Charities. Yeah, okay, yeah, Catholic yeah, Charities. Yeah. Um, I know Catholic we, Relief Services also, they do the but Catholic Charities here in the United sure. States. Sure, yes. yeah. We actually teamed up with an organization called All Hands and Hearts, which does relief work all over the world, as a matter of fact. We kind of teamed up with them, the Catholic Charities who sent us down and was with a group of, I would say it was only about, you know, 18 to 20 of us, and we were down for about a week. Hard work. I mean, I mean you actually helped them dig out, oh, clean their homes. I mean, it's hands on. When we were in Puerto Rico, we were in full hazmat suits with respirators and goggles and gloves and helmets. I mean, it was so hot. They literally told us to kind of eyeball each other and check on each other because the temperature was so hot. We were doing such manual labor that we had to make sure each other didn't get overheated and whatnot. So the people who were down there who were without running water and were without electricity and, and air conditioning, I mean, you know, we were able to take breaks and take water breaks and go home right, and right. sleep at night. So the giving aspect of that, it was it, that was one of the most rewarding missions trips that I've gotten to be part of. And I was happy that I got to do it with a, a group of, of folks from, from right here in New York City. That's great. I mean, it, like you said, it's so rewarding uh, to do that type of work. But, you know, when you're, you're making that sacrifice, yeah. or you're leaving your home, you know, your bed at night and you're going to sleep in a foreign place and, you know, to help people. And first of all, it's, it makes you feel better for mm -hmm. yourself. But also you feel this is what we're called to do right? as followers of Christ. We're called to go out of ourself. A lot of times in this world, in this day and age, people aren't doing that. You know, everything wants to come in. Yeah. And you know, yeah. when you go to these places and you see that, you think of the things that we get upset about and we you lose sleep over, and here they're losing their livelihoods, their homes. They don't have a roof over their heads. They don't know where they're gonna to sleep tomorrow. It really is heart-wrenching when you see that. But to know that you're making a difference and using your gifts and talents to do that makes a big difference. You know, it was just a feeling that I couldn't get away from. When I found out that there was the opportunity to go down and I knew, well, listen, you're gonna take off work and you're gonna be unpaid for that time. And for me personally, it was just a, there was no question. I, I'm like, I have to go. I can't, I can help. They need the help. Why wouldn't I go? Okay. So, um, and I remember some of the team members that we were with were, you know, from young to, to very old. There was a, a lady who went with us who was, well above 65 who went down and helped wow, that's out. Old. Shh, no, it's not. No, it's not. But there was some there were some, some really young people. What I meant was compared, there was some, you know, I think there were some teenagers who came down with us. So there was a range of volunteers. Okay. Not that anyone was old. Not at all. But um, that but it doesn't matter what age, you can still make it difference. Giving hearts. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So so uh, let me just uh, check this. Yeah, top it's of smelling here. like it's coming along. Yeah, like but all to. those vegetables and flavors like just meld together you know it reminds us when we were a kid right waking up in the morning oh, right yeah you know, especially on a sunday smelling the onions the garlic and, yeah oh the garlic we forgot to put the garlic in whoops oh, oh it's right over here yeah let's put this garlic right in all right you see we all make mistakes right? going to, no it's not a mistake it's just uh <laughs> just out of order let's put that's this all. in here and then that's going to go... Uh, I'll let that saute a little minute. bit. We'll take a break and yeah. we'll be back. Sounds good. We're going to take a break right now. We'll come back with Michael Padula and we'll taste this delicious Varese frittata. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread with QVC's Michael Padula. I'm preparing a Varese frittata. We're going to put the finishing touches on this, Michael. Put it in the oven and then we'll have a little conversation and then we'll taste it. Can't wait. All right, so yeah. I have the eggs beaded up here. I have my vegetables sauteed in here, which we have uh, basically potatoes, small potatoes, peppers, onions, garlic. And here we have our eggs, mm -hmm. grated cheese, breadcrumbs, salt and pepper, a little hot pepper. I'm gonna pour this over. Pour it all around. right back here. I'm gonna let this sit for a minute. Just make sure all the egg and the vegetables all blend together. And then I'm gonna pop it right in the oven here. I'm gonna bake it for about 15 minutes or so. 
smells so good. It smells good. It's not even yeah. finished. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just popped this in the oven. We let it bake for about 10 minutes or so. We're gonna take it out right now and doesn't that smell good? Oh man, does it smell good. <laughs> Listen. Look at that. Wow. That looks fantastic. It's prettier than anything I present on QVC, <laughs> I'll tell you that. It I tell you, everything better. is, you know, appearance. Presentation is everything. We could wow. make sure that it flips out. Right. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this like this. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna flip it right here. I'm gonna put this right here, like this. All right. Flip it over. Boom. And there we go. So of course you would put it on a dish. Right. And then uh, we can cut this up. Okay. And like I said, you can make anything you have in the refrigerator, any vegetable, meat, fish, any leftover. Right. And we use all fresh vegetables today. Sure. So. And this makes, you know, if you want to make it for lunch, you could put a nice bed of salad underneath. Yeah. And just put a nice piece of omelet on top. You put this right here yeah. in the dish. Of course, you can garnish it with a little piece of Italian parsley to make it look nice. And we can put this right there. So let me know. What do you think? 10 and 11. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> Listen. Now, of course, if you want to put some extra salt and pepper, right? I think uh, I don't that think we'll it's need needed, it, but good, right? <laughs> now, it's more than good. Tell me, wow! How could we add a little southern flavor to an omelet like this? Hot sauce, hot sauce. I mean, come on, no, well, that's, I mean, that's me being that's me kidding around. I mean, right. listen, people in the South love to put a little Tabasco on. Right, right. I don't mind it either. I love a little Tabasco right. on, especially on an egg mixture, right? But, what other ingredients, uh, like, you know, tenant ingredients for uh, Southern yeah. food? You know, I would just say that like Southerners love to just put a little spice on spice. whatever they're right. eating. You know, we eat a lot of seafood down South. There's a lot of, you know, people ask me all the time, especially living in, in right. New York, they ask me, have you ever had crawfish? Right. Yes, right. plenty of times. Uh, I would just say that, you a lot know, of shrimp, they use a lot of shrimp, shrimp right. sausage, right. crawfish. Um, you know, I've had alligator tail, right. I'm not gonna lie. Um, lots of fish, jambalaya. Yeah. All, yeah, of all that, that stuff. Little, little spice to it. I was down in uh, New Orleans a couple of times, and of course, the restaurants you can't beat. Forget. But uh, I mean, every restaurant was unique, and everyone you know, had something special, and it, the lines were out the door. I haven't been there in a number of years. I don't know how it is now. Is it still as popular? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, things Bourbon are different Street. a little bit now, yeah. in the you know, since the last 24 months. But I, yeah, I mean, Louisiana is still super known for its food and its culture right. and its people, and very similar to Italian people in New York. The Louisiana people in the South love to gather right. for food. Love to. It's a it's a familial thing. It's a right. it's a way that you show love. Now, love. what do you like to cook? You know, there's not many things I don't like to cook. I will say that I. This sounds a little bit unsouthern of me, but I've kind of had my fill for the moment of of Southern cuisine. And I'm not super good at like, you know, jambalaya etouffee, right. uh, gumbo. Right. That takes a little bit more skill than maybe I have. So I try to keep it simple. I love to cook fish. I love to cook chicken. And listen, I'll just put it out there. I love to try crock pot recipes and do whatnot. Do you cook a lot at home? I, I try to, yeah. absolutely, yeah. I literally try to limit it to one, one time out a week and that's right. normally for a fun like brunch or something but right. i love to cook at home well you must be very busy i mean your schedule right i mean my schedule how many hours night. a day are you on this sh i mean do you do the show it depends it depends every every week is different i was on this morning as a matter of fact we had a two-hour show this morning i've been on you know nine hours in a day and then i've been on you know not for a couple of days right, right, so right, right. middle of the night first thing in the morning so you're like the priest we're always on call i'm just having like I mean, some days exactly. are crazy some days are less hectic but you know you're always on it. call and you're always doing something you know i'm a chaplain now for the fire department too yeah, right so it's another response and you know i get the calls in the middle of the night you get this and that but you know we do what we have to do sure that's what this this show is all about, yeah. you know, as we said, faith. And, you know, where did you get your faith? You got it from a kid when you went to school, your parents, they instilled into you these things that we're called to do. Right. And that's why you're such a person you are, mm -hmm. going to these missions, caring for people, trying to do your best to go out of your way, making sacrifices mm -hmm. for people. And, you know, that's uh, that's what we try to bring to the show and, and remind people those are the things that are missing today in our world. Sure. I really appreciate you oh, please. coming My here. It's good to see you again. Thank you very much. And, Agreed. Uh, you know, the last time you were helping to film the show, now you're in the front of the house, you're a star on the QVC. 
maybe one day you'll own a company or film hey. company and you'll get a priest to come on. And you'll be the priest <laughs> I call. And don't forget my cookbook. <laughs> I, I, your cookbook. Right, really. Got Breaking Bread with Monsignor Jamie, stuff. okay? Yeah, you got I, it. I went from feeding the stomach to feeding the soul. <laughs> and you do both very well. I try. And and it's people like you that inspire us to well, keep doing you. what we do. Thank you very and, much. It's been uh, my pleasure. Let's work together and anything else I can help you with. And I'll love to come back sometime that too. That sounds great. I sounds look forward to it. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Breaking Bread with Michael Padula and you know, talking about his life and, you know, what he does, not just, you know, on TV and QVC and, you know, doing all that stuff on TV, but who he is as a person and how he goes out of himself to help others. And that's what we try to bring about in the show. You know, Christ was around for everyone. He ate with the sinners and he ate with the saints. Uh, he was there for people. He was always sat down with a meal, tried to talk to them. And that's what we try to bring out in the show. You know, bringing together, you know, faith, family, you know, of course, food, but you know, friends, that's what it's all about. And even not just friends, people that we don't know to do things for them that we have to go out of ourselves and, and reach out to people and try our best, you know, to be there for people, help people and really encourage people, especially in times of need, you know, crisis, you know, floods, earthquakes, you know, things like that, where people are really down and out. That's when they need God in their lives. And it's up to us to bring that together. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Breaking Bread. I'll see you next time.